see far from far away. Hero and tyrant would soon have their final showdown. At stake were not just one boy's fate, but the fate of the whole moon, and the earth, and the sun, and galaxy, and... Well, let's just say he better not mess up. Ladies and gentlemen, to talk about Puppeteer from Japan Studios, please welcome creative director Gavin Moore. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. When they asked me to do this, I really didn't know what I was going to talk about. So I thought, what was a guy that actually made the Get Away, a London gangster game on the PlayStation 2 in London, then moved to Tokyo and made horror games in the Siren series with Toyama-san, come up with this mad, wacky, crazy game here. But let me tell you a story. It all happened when I was sitting on the sofa with my son, and we're playing games together, and he just literally throws the controller on the floor, gets up and says, this is boring, and walks outside. And half of me's like, great, he's gone outside to play at last. Stay there, don't come back. And then the other half of me is, hold on a second, I'm the creative director of Japan Studio and I make games and my son is outside playing. He should be in the dark, like I did when I was a kid playing games. So when he came back in and we sat down for dinner, I said, what was wrong? And he said, it's boring. I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. I want it to change every five to 10 minutes. So I went away and I thought about this. How do you make a game that changes every five to 10 minutes? It's impossible, right? And so I thought so, until I went to Bunraku, Japanese puppet theater. And while all the guys were like, you know, doing their thing with their puppets, amazing acting, all the stage behind them was changing all the time. The sets would revolve in and bring new life to the scene. And that's where it hit on me. I'd make this theater and it would be this theater of the amazing and fantastic, where instead of you moving through the world, the world would move around you, and then I would change the world every five to 10 minutes so that you would want to keep playing all the time. Because you want to see what craziness is coming next. Now, Puppeteer is a dark fairy tale, much in the same vein as Tim Burton or Terry Gilliam, but I'm an eccentric Englishman so there's a lot of Monty Python in there, so prepare to be a little bit amazed with what you are going to see. Um, our hero basically is uh, basically stolen away to the moon by the evil moon bear king, who shoves his soul into a wooden puppet. He then upsets the king, who rips his head off, eats it, and throws him away. So our headless hero is roaming the corridors, and he meets a flying cat. This flying cat teaches him that he can find different heads and use those on his adventure. So with this new ability where the heads are his life, basically if he gets hit, he gets, takes damage, his head will fall off, and then you have three seconds to pick it up. Why three seconds? Because it's the food rule, right? We all know when you drop your toast, you get three seconds to pick it up before your mum comes along, spanks you on the rest and says you can't eat that. But there are a hundred of those heads to find in the game, and each of those heads has an individual ability that you can use somewhere in the game. It might unlock a bonus stage, it might help you in a boss battle, etc. Then there are also four hero heads. In our story, there are four hapless heroes who faced off against the Moon Bear King, and they were pathetic. Let's face it, they lost. He ripped off their heads, scattered those across the moon, and in our adventure, our hero actually comes to, to find those and use those. Now, the last piece of the puzzle is a pair of magic scissors. He steals a pair of magic scissors, escapes the Black Castle, and that's when his crazy adventure begins. So what I'm actually gonna show you today is about three quarters of the way through the game. We're playing it over there, but I'm gonna play it, so I'm probably gonna die a lot, okay? So if I do die a lot, I, I apologize. Kutaro hopped astride the newly emancipated Mr. Pink and Sorry. raced after General Dragon. I'm controlling the second character on my right stick, and I'm controlling my main character on this stick. 
Okay? And I'm riding a flamingo. Of course I'm riding a flamingo. Why wouldn't I be riding a flamingo? Across the back of a dragon. Mr. Pig skimmed along the dragon's back as Kutaro held on tight. My control is broken. Seriously. Awesome. So we'll come back to that in a minute, shall we? Because I look pathetic playing my own game there. With Picarina. So one thing that I was talking to my son about was imagination. And I was saying, well, why don't you draw? And he'd go draw stuff, and he's doing stuff. And I'm saying, but you get so frustrated all the time. You draw something, you throw it away. And you draw something, you throw it away. And you keep changing your mind about everything. And he's saying, well, that's what my life's like. TV bombards me all the time. You bombard me all the time. I steal your iPad all the time. You know, that sort of thing. And that's why this game came about. It was to recreate or enable my imagination. After I'd made The Getaway, which was a violent gangster game, and after I'd made horror games with Toyama-san, I didn't want to make anything that was realistic anymore. I wanted to unleash my imagination. And that's why when you play this game, and I hope you do play it, and it comes out on September the 10th, and it's only 40 bucks, guys, and there's 12 plus hours of gameplay here, yeah, right? And you can play it two-player with the loved ones. <laughs> guys, this is the two-player controller. All right, we'll um, finish up then, I think. Uh, you can play it. It's up there. It's got four pods at the back there. We've got two demos running. One's a tutorial with the cat. One is this dragon battle that I haven't got to show you today. I wish I could have, but there you go. But uh, please head over there to the PlayStation 3 area and play it. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you very much. Galaxy far from far away. Prepare for an astonishing adventure full of mystery, full of danger, and full of artistry. At stake were not just one boy's fate, but the fate of the whole moon, and the earth, and the sun, and galaxy. grew even clashier. The boy sniffed, sliced, and sundered with the cold realization his life counted on it. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro made the forceps, <coughs> I mean scissors, be with him. going on PlayStation here, Rego Chairs over at E3 2013 at our PlayStation booth. And I'm, I'm joined by a very familiar face, I'm sure you've seen him several times in my dev diaries, uh, Gavin Moore, creative director on Puppeteer. How are you, my friend? I am doing well, thank you very much. How are you feeling? You're looking a little pale. I know it's been like a couple of days you've been here in LA. Yeah, you would think I'd be a little bit more tan, <laughs> right? but they kept me locked up here. Well, I, I, on behalf of PlayStation, I'm very, very sorry. So let's okay. talk about Puppeteer. You had semi, a semi-demo. But uh, we've, seen, we've seen Puppeteer and, and it's all its greatness several, several times, especially in all the video dev diaries that I've cut for you guys. Uh, how does it feel to be on the main stage 
showcasing Puppeteer and having players uh, get their hands on it for the first time. Oh, that, that's the best part. Yeah. You know, when you're making a game, you go through years of self-doubt. So like, am I doing the right thing? Am I going in the right direction? Am I, I being too crazy? <laughs> you know? And then when you actually get it onto the floor and you can actually see the smiles and people laughing as they're playing the game, that's just an awesome, you know. Do you feeling. think it's the headless protagonist or the, or the pink flamingo that makes everyone smile? I think it's the pink, pink flamingo, pink Mr. Flamingo. Pink. I'm from yeah. Miami, I'm just gonna drop it in there. I love my <laughs> pink flamingos. So let's talk about the backstory. I'd love to hear the story over and over again. You come from a dark, nitty gritty world of game design. Uh, well, not game design, game storytelling. And now we're in the complete opposite spectrum. I've heard right. Monty Python references. I've heard Tim Burton references. Explain right. to me that whole backstory. Okay, well, I've been in games for what, 16 years? A long 20 time. years, sorry. A long time. Before 16 PlayStation. 16 years at Sony. Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose uh, what I'm most known for is the getaway on PlayStation yes. 2 in I London. That announcement. And then I came to Japan after making a gruesome gangster game. And I to uh, teamed up with Toyama-san to make the Siren series. Awesome. Toyama-san, yeah. di director of Gravity Days, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we did three of those, three dark, gruesome horror games, basically. There's anything wrong with that. It's no, fantastic. they were good, good fun. And then I guess I'm now. Just <laughs> <laughs> and then I, fin I finished that, and then I was thinking, do you know, if I make another violent game, I'm going to, you know, explode, basically. Which is why you're so pale. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so then I decided to move over completely and stay out of that reality world and move into a fantastical world. And that's how Puppeteer was kind of born. It was like freeing up my creativeness. So with your creativeness and wanting to really explore and enter into new genres of, you know, of gaming and platforming, uh, you also mentioned your son. Apparently he was bored of video games and he actually wanted to go outside and Play, enjoy yeah. the sun. Yeah, how it, dare he? How dare he enjoy Just the sun? Just sit in this dark room with your dad and I play I spent games. all this money on this massive <laughs> LCD screen. Yeah. I work for PlayStation and you, you want to play outside? Yeah. No, we must change this. So talk about that story. Well, that was really interesting because he, he loves games. Don't get me wrong. He does love games. But what he was becoming frustrated was he was playing the same things. Over and, and over, over and again. Happens. And he was in the same level for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And he was becoming bored of the same background or doing the same thing. And so that drove him to play outside, would you believe? So you brought the, in the outside back inside. Yeah, inside. And explain to us how you did that with Puppeteer. Well, the idea was that if he was bored doing the same thing, then he had to surely be you know alive if he was doing something new every five to ten minutes absolutely and so i was thinking how could i make a game where i could possibly change the environment and the situation every five to ten minutes without the loading screens and the right. whole checkpoints seamless walking through a door and waiting for a load time right so, so now we were staring into this japanese theater where that's where the inspiration came right from. i went to bunraku japanese puppet theater yes and I mean, it's amazing to watch this. These puppets are alive and everything. But I was sitting there shocked because all the sets were changing, moving, sliding in and out, rotating oh. as the actual no green screen, play was going. No nothing, CG. nothing, no. Okay. So it was guys a real puppet black, Yoda. Guys in black, <laughs> pushing awesome. it on and off. I think it's phenomenal, yeah. And that's where it really hit me. I could make this I'm magical I'm going to be a puppeteer. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, wait a minute, no. I'm going to make a game where you play as Right. Right. <laughs> I don't think I have the skill. <laughs> I don't look that good in black either. So talk about the story. There's, there's, it's a little dark, but it's also a, a, a fairy tale. How does that work? Yeah, people always say to me, right, isn't it dark for kids? But actually, Puppeteer is written for gamers. I wrote it, and I want to play it. That's so, awesome. I mean, I, did, I used Sony's money to make a game for my son and me to play, basically. But that's cool, you know. That's cool, too. Yeah. Great. But um, <laughs> fairy tales have always been dark. And no, nobody is darker than Grimm's fairy tales. Yeah. I mean, you get the message, don't go into the woods at night. Yeah. Little Red Riding Hood. Cinderella, Red Cinderella, Snow White, right. those are dark, dark, dark stories. things. Little Mermaid, super dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of that. <laughs> and so I decided that I, I wanted to create something, you know, where I come from, which is my culture, where I grew up with that, those sort of movies of that Monty Python-esque strangeness mixed with the wonderful movies of Tim Burton and Terry Gilliam. We, if you go into a Terry Gilliam movie, it, there's so much in there oh, yeah. that you have to kind of watch it twice to see everything that's going on. And he takes you on these wonderful journeys. So, so you mentioned there's a lot going on. So when I look at Puppeteer, 
you know, you say you're, you're basically moving the world around the gamer, but there's a lot of depth in there. It's like, oh, yeah. what's one of my favorite 3D titles for PlayStation 3. Yeah, it looks great in 3D. So talk about the 3D tech and how you were able to bring the back world forward. Well, it was kind of a mistake. <laughs> right? Those are the best, of the, those are the we best actually, accidents. <laughs> we actually, uh, we put the curtain in right. and the stage, and we automatically created a frame. And we have a fixed camera. Yeah, which you're already right? cheating in 3D world. Yeah. 3D speak, you're already cheating. Right. Right. So we have a fixed <laughs> camera, so basically, we don't have to fly around behind somebody and make right. somebody right. sick. Right? We can be fixed. And that means we can put layers and layers and layers into the back of the stage, but then we can Getting throw forward. characters out over the front of the right. stage. And because that border's always there, you get this tremendous depth in 3D. So it's almost like you're looking inside a box. Right. So, which, which is one of my favorite things about Puppet Pier are, are the boss battles. They're massive, beautiful boss battles that look gorgeous in 3D. Like the one I was going to show today. Yes, the one that <laughs> I the knew giant because I've seen it before. <laughs> but uh, but, but the, giant, the giant dragon fight is phenomenal. Believe me, it is. <laughs> so, any closing comments? Anything you want to say? You know, to, to our viewers? Yeah, I mean... Besides buy Puppeteer? <laughs> well, obviously buy Puppeteer. That would really appreciate that. Because we don't want you to go to the dark side again. No. We want you to stay happy. Yeah. And, and so I, always, I already have another idea, but we don't know, uh, you know... If we, we don't get enough Puppeteer sales, you know, it might not happen. Right on. That, well, that's true. I'm going to switch over to the prompter and read off the prompter. Coming up a bit later, we've got Infamous Second Son. But first, we're rolling some cool trailers, starting with Deadpool. <laughs> awesome. Deadpool here. I see you looking at me like, where do I know him from? Let us help you out, Marvel anti-hero. So yeah, kind of a big deal. In fact, Marvel hired the best editors in the world to create an expensive-ass trailer for my new game. But we took all their money and made our own trailer. Booyah! You start with weird, drony music, everything dark and foreboding. It's all apocalyptic and stuff. Screw this! Let's torch this mother! Bang, 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 bang. What the? Quick shot of our sweet guns. Surprise, Cable, old buddy. Quick shot of some awesome bazookas. No, not Cable's man bazookas. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me help you out there, partner. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Well, there goes our budget. I'm making art here. Bring that beat back. Bang. Fire die! And if that don't put skid marks in your pants, wait till you see this. Really? Explosion! Hell yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I asked for steady cam. Sayonara, biatches. If you have the skills, you might just have what it takes to join Team Turbo in DreamWorks Turbo Super Stunt Squad, the video game. Feed the speed and perform awesome stunts with Turbo and his crew. Whiplash. Here I come. Skid mark. Yes. Burn. Woo -woo. Smooth move. Tricked out, baby. It's turbocharged action like you've never seen before. DreamWorks Turbo Super Stunt Squad, the video game. PlayStation.